Hey guys, this is Panther0822. I have been asked this question uh, actually quite a few hey times. Hey guys, this is Panther0822. Uh, I have I been asked this question uh, actually quite a few hey times. Hey guys, I need to deal with that. That way there's not any echo or anything like that. So, anyways, I've um, I've been asked on more than one occasion as far as what do I use for streaming software? How do I get started? It's a question that I've gotten quite a few times uh, from several different people, and I've sent people messages and links and things like that. Um, one of the people, though, has... Um, actually, I need to send him a message here real quick. Okay. So right now, um, I'm using uh, I'm using Game Show is what I'm using right now in order to actually stream this. I prefer Game Show in its own way because Game Show, in a lot of ways, is a little bit more reliable, things like that, and. Um, <laughs> All right. So, anyways, um, the person that I'm actually messaging right now is actually the person specifically that um, that asked that asked me about this. So he's uh, he's a friend of mine that I met here at the apartment, and um, and yeah. So anyway, so Game Show is the dominant one that I uh, that I use. I use Game Show because it allows me a little finer control as far as some things go. OBS is not a bad software. It is a free software. Um, and Game Show has a free version. So let's actually talk about Game Show since we're already using it, and then we'll talk about OBS. So as far as Game Show goes, um, you'll want to go... Sorry, I'm... Uh, There we go. So this is Game Show's uh, official website. So it's GameShow.net. Um, oh, no. All right, so there's the website for you guys. Um, and so right, right here, center page free version you can also buy this software as well the free version isn't really that much different than the paid version the major difference though is the watermark and I gotta be really honest I think the watermark is annoying as hell um, the, the the watermark lives in the bottom left corner of your monitor and then it expands out to the center of the mo of, of your thing dead center, big letters, game show, and then it shrinks back down into that bottom left corner. Um, this is not the only free version that does this. Um, I've come across a few others. I think XSplit does this. I know that... Um, um, oh, crap. What is it? It's Telestreams. Wirecast. Wirecast does the same thing. So... Um, it's not something that's exclusive to Game Show. If you want to get rid of that, though, you'll want to buy it. And if you buy it, it's really honestly not too bad. Um, so 
So let's get into that. So you go through and you fill all this crap out and it's $30. So like I said, it's really not too bad for what it is, for what it does. It's a good program and for 30 bucks, you get yourself a good software that will will do what you need it to do. So um, so let's get back actually to game show itself. All right, so uh, it's already scaled to fit. All right, so um, you guys can kind of see, you can see the meters on the left and the right-hand side. So the left-hand side is your preview as far as things go. So right now, uh, what am I? Uh, so across the top are your different controls, your different controls as far as what you can do. So the middle one right here controls basically your scale. So if I were to up the scale, it gets bigger. And then if I were to shrink the scale, it gets it gets smaller. So and then you also have well, you guys actually can't see this because as I do this, this is all showing me in the preview. So, um, so I'm going to scale this up here real quick. And then there's this arrow button right here at the bottom. So if you want to send something over, because this left-hand side, this is all preview is what this is. Nobody is – you guys aren't actually seeing how large this has changed until – I hit that arrow button. Once I've hit that arrow button, it's now over on this smaller screen. This smaller screen is the live view, and it even says live, and it's got its thing. And then if I were to, say, adjust the X rotation, it now adjusts the X rotation. If I were to adjust, let's say, the Z rotation, and adjust the Z rotation. So I, you, you can actually play with things and adjust and play with different things and things like that. And then um, you guys can't, unfortunately, you guys can't actually see the control panel. Um, I wish you guys could, but you can't. But anyways, on this left-hand side, there's a thing that says scale to fit. So you hit that. And then underneath that, there's a reset position, and it resets everything. And as soon as I hit that, it automatically resets it. So... That's kind of, so we're going to set that to that. We're going to tell that to, oh, that scales it back down. So, all right, we're going to set this at 100%. And then we're going to send that over. All right. So, oh, you guys can't actually see the control panel. Fantastic. For a minute, I was thinking you guys couldn't see the control panel. But this control panel is pretty much, this first one is how you control, again, your scale, your X, Y, Z axis. Uh, and then as far as like scale to fit and then your and then you can reset the position you also have your crop so I can adjust the left hand side and shrink things or I can reset it and then send it over there so and this panel for any video capture that you have is exactly the same as what it is. It doesn't matter. So I'll go over. So we'll come back here. This very first one is basically the stack. Here's the way the stack works. The thing that is on top is the thing that's on top. So right now in order for my camera to stay in the lower right hand corner, which is where I have it positioned right now, it's got to stay on top. As soon as I move that position and then send it over, you guys are no longer seeing me as far as that goes. So, but say I don't like what I uh, say I don't want me to be in that lower uh, right corner. I want me to be in the top right corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it back to the top of the stack. I've already moved me to the top right corner. I'm going to hit the arrow button, and now I'm in the top right corner. So nothing happens to the live view 
until you hit this arrow. Once you hit this arrow, this arrow will move whatever's in your preview over to the right-hand side to the live view. So that's pretty much that. Um, so let's get into the microphone here a little bit. So what I've done in order to make sure that the volumes are good is I have moved, I have maxed out the left and right channels. Now I can move the volume up. I can move this up to uh, 199 and I can also move it. I can also adjust this number to where it's pretty much as large as I want, which I have done in the, in the past before, which is royally screwed the audio quality and has really been an issue and things like that. So, um, it's you, you do want to be careful. So underneath the window view, you have your audio mixer. And under your audio mixer, you can hit this little add button, and then you can add different effects and different things like that. So like you can get in and you can do your multiband EQ for those of you who are sound technicians and you really want to get into fine tuning things as far as like your lows, your mids, your highs, and things like that. I mean, you can really dork around with this. So this is your multiband. So, I mean, you can get really, really, really honed in on your frequencies and things like that. So, I mean, if you really want to get picky and things like that, you can absolutely get into it and things like that. I typically don't mess with it because I have, in the environment I am in, I don't have much of a need for it. So, I typically don't... Um, I typically don't use it because there's really no need for me to use it. So, um, so yeah. And then over here we've got our preview volume, so I could max out the preview volume and and things like that. So I mean, there's 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 shit that you guys can do to to adjust things and things like that. Here's kind of the the key when it comes to audio mixing is that you want to try and be as close to zero as possible. You don't want to be over zero. Over zero is called spiking. It's bad. It creates issues. So if you, I don't know if you guys can actually see it, but my when I'm speaking, the green line is actually going up to the zero or a little bit underneath, depending on how loud I speak. If I get really, 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 really loud, it spikes up. But if I get really, really quiet, the volume drops down. So... Again, this is a way for you to to control and actually see things. So that's pretty much game show in a nutshell. There's really not much to it. This is your stack. When you want to add an item, you hit add. This is your different capture devices and things like that. So you can add your different capture devices. I could add a clock if I wanted to. So if I hit this clock, it's going to bring up a thing. And it's going to show me the current time. The other thing that I can do with this clock, if I want to is I can get specific as far as like the date and things like that and there's no reason for that. Um, I can tell it to shut down when I'm not live. And then the other thing that I can do is I can do advanced formatting and then I can change the formatting. And then the other thing is is background none or I can tell it to do a solid background, something like that. So, um, and again, if I hit cancel on this, it's not going to actually add this. But if I hit OK, it's going to show the clock. But right now, it's not in the live view. But if I hit that arrow, now it is. Now, here's something really cool. If you take a look at all of the stuff that's over here on this left-hand side, you've got this little eye. This eye is whether it's visible. As soon as you hit it, it goes gray. On your preview, it shows you that it is grayed out, but it's still live because you haven't transferred it. So boom it's now transferred okay so again it's it's a pretty simple program to use it's not really difficult again the free version in this lower left hand corner it'll say game show and then it'll expand out to the center and get really big and say game show it's annoying as hell so my recommendation is if you've got the 30 bucks get the paid version it's just going to be better for you so all right, let's get into OBS. OBS honestly really isn't that different. So this is OBS's website. So OBS is free. You can download it. Um, let's. Uh, I, so I put game show in. I put the game show link for you in the chat. So let's throw the OBS link there for you. So there's the OBS link for you guys. 
All right, so let's get back to the website here. All right. So OBS is free. Um, it's open broadcasting systems is what it is. It's really cool. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, so it's really cool. This is the website. It just kind of shows you different stuff. By the way, this is all in dark mode. So there's that. All right, so let's actually get over to OBS. So right now, here's the deal. With OBS, because I'm currently using Game Show, there are resources that I'm not going to be able to use because they're already in use by Game Show. That being said, I can still... Here is when you... So you've got your different scene selection that you can do. So you can add multiple scenes. You can do the same thing with OBS or with with Game Show. With Game Show, you can add different scenes and and do a lot of really cool stuff. There's a lot of fantastic stuff you can do with Game Show and OBS. You can do full production stuff. So there's really not a lot of difference in between Game Show and OBS. They're almost identical programs for the most part. There's really not a lot of difference. So this is kind of the default view for OBS. And then the other thing that you can do is you can do studio mode. Now studio mode is exactly the same view that Game Show does by default. So um, let's actually, something that I'm not doing right now is I don't have any music. Let's throw some music there in the background. And then right now, OBS is actually picking up the, the music. So if I want to adjust that music, I've got to come over here to Game Show. I've got to come over to the audio. Right now, it's at 100% volume. We're going to drop it to 10. It's not going to come over to the main view again unless I hit that arrow. So I'm going to hit that arrow. Hit the arrow. All right, and there we go. The music volume is now dropped. All right. Now, like I said, because I've got this stuff running, a lot of this stuff isn't going to be working in OBS because that resource is already dedicated. But we can give it a shot. So we'll hit Capture Audio Device. We'll hit OK. And Default Audio Device. There we go. All right. Now, I'd been asked a very, very specific question. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into settings for OBS. Now, when it comes to OBS, you've got all of this stuff here on the left-hand side. This is how you can configure different things and stuff like that. So if you want to configure your output, this is how you configure your output stuff. And then you go to audio. Audio is where you configure all of your audio stuff. So you can control as far as your audio. Uh, meter decay rate and things like that. If you've got push to talk microphones or things like that, you can enable push to talk. Um, so you can choose whether, as far as your channel goes, you can choose your channel. So it can be stereo 214041, or or even 71. And then as far as desktop audio, we've got desktop audio disabled, but we'll go ahead and change it to a default. Now here's the deal. Until I hit apply, nothing changes, okay? So, we're going to hit apply. All right, and now you guys can see over here, this is showing the desktop audio. And it's really, really hot. So, I can either turn that down here, or I can hit settings, and then I can even hit some filters. I can add some stuff. So, I can add, like, some noise suppression which doesn't really do much negative 30 db isn't going to do much let's uh actually drop it out to a 60 db and then close really again because this isn't a microphone or anything it's really not going to do much but it's there for us all right so we can even gain we can do a noise gate noise gates are really cool because noise gates basically give you a filter as far as your db now db is decibels and it's basically how many decibels it's basically plus or minus x amount of decibels so uh, this is going to close the gate at 30 db and it's going to open the gate at 26 db which is fine more than enough okay 
again because this is actually pulling directly from the audio of the computer I'm not really adjusting much if I really want to adjust it I've got to actually pull the volume down that's how I adjust that so I can bring that up all right let's get back into so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove that but it's still capturing it and it's still capturing it because with OBS in your settings it is still capturing it until you disable it once you disable it and hit apply it's no longer there all right now let's talk about our microphone so desktop device I have it disabled we'll say default we'll hit apply and then we'll hit over here and then we'll transfer now again for the most part it's really not going to matter the microphone as far as this goes it's default it's going to capture it it's sending it over and things like that now nothing is live right now because i haven't hit start stream or i haven't hit start recording so it's not going to do anything and i'm not going to actually hit any of these things because again i would end up basically doubling and it would create an issue and would be would just be bad so we're not going to do that all right but we've got the same filters now if you notice for the most part this is getting up into the red this is bad we don't want this this is hitting above our zero mark and we don't want that so in order to control that what we're going to do is we're going to come into here we're going to go into filters and typically what's enough as far as this goes is just a noise suppression Noise suppression is a good way to go for a lot of stuff because what noise suppression does is it takes all the, uh, basically anything else that's happening in the room that's creating noise, like I've got a ceiling fan, a regular fan, and the AC is going right now. So there's a lot of actually external noise that's going on that this microphone is picking up. So in order to reduce that noise, I need to do a noise suppression. The other thing that I want to add in order to do things is I like do also adding a noise gate a noise gate is also a good thing because it helps as far as frequency and things like that so we're gonna add that so that's gonna be good now if you're taking a look at these volumes we're still hitting pretty hot so there's ways that I can adjust that so we're gonna come to our filters and so we can do a couple of different things. So we can adjust the attack time, we can adjust the hold time, and we can adjust the release time. But what I'm gonna do is we want the open threshold to be a little bit more, but we also wanna lower, we wanna lower this. All right, and then if you take a look here, it's we're getting a little bit better. But say I want to adjust my attack speed in milliseconds. So we're currently at 30 or 25, so we'll say 30. Then we'll hit close. Now, if you take a look at this, we're still hitting a little bit. So we want to go, okay, that wasn't quite the best idea. So what we'll do is we'll bring this back up up to about 52 and we'll we don't want to adjust it that badly we want to adjust it about there and then we'll adjust our attack speed let's say we want to adjust our attack speed to 50 okay so these are just kind of some different ways that you can play around and mess around with the difference with sound and things like that to control things now again the stuff I've done really hasn't done a great job as far as controlling this and things like that which is okay the main emphasis was really just to kind of show you guys what you guys can do with the software and things like that so what I'm gonna do though is the noise gate we're gonna get rid of the noise gate. I don't want the noise gate. So we're gonna hit the minus on that. It's gonna ask, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. And this is fine. Okay. Now let's try adding something else. So let's say we wanna add a video capture device. So we're gonna say, okay. 
and it's going to be a little annoyed at us because right now, like I said, I'm running game show, and because I'm running game show and already capturing stuff, it's going to throw a hissy fit. Like right now, it's saying that OBS is not wanting to respond, which is understandable. So we'll go ahead and close it out. That's fine. And then we'll reopen it. All right, close program because you're not responding. That's fine. All right, so need to close this other stuff out, and then we're gonna reopen OBS. All right, it's gonna take a minute for OBS to open, so we'll wait while it opens up. And the brother-in-law is watching Wade play Uno. No, don't apologize. You're fine. All right, so we're back into OBS, but we're not in studio mode. So if we want to go back to studio mode, we just hit studio mode. If we want to exit studio mode. We head out of studio mode. Now, because we left in the settings the microphone default, it's picking up the microphone just fine. Okay. All right. So what we really want to do, though, video capture is going to throw us a hissy fit. But we're going to do a display capture. Okay. So this is the display capture. This is capturing everything that I'm doing on the display right now. So if I double click it, it allows me to do different things. So say I had a second monitor, which I wish I had, but I don't. Um, and that's where I could actually tell this to change to a different uh, monitor, things like that. And it kind of gives you the infinite window effect. It's actually kind of cool when you look at it this way. So, all right, so we're going to come to this. We're going to exit out. Come on. Get rid of it. It doesn't want to get rid of it. It's being, oh, it's asking, are you sure you want to do it? I'm being blind. All right, now let's see if we can actually, let's do a window capture. Yes. All right, so window capture is really cool because window capture actually allows me to capture a specific window. So right now, this is capturing the game show window. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then I can move this around, bring this here. And then I can even scale it to where you guys are seeing this. And right now, so this is capturing everything that's going on as far as game show goes. Now let's double click on this again. And let's change windows. Let's say we want to capture... Uh, let's say we want to capture this. Okay, so there's nothing really going on with this. So, not really capturing anything. All right, so let's go. Nothing really capturing there. And nothing really there. All right. So, that's kind of, that is the, the window capture. Window capture will capture a very specific window. So, this is cool if you've got a game that's, going to be that's in window mode so any game that you're launching that um that you have that has a window mode option so let's actually shrink this down and so we'll launch terraria it's going to take a minute for terraria to launch which is fine So Terraria has two different modes that you can play the game in, uh, but it's going to take a minute for it to launch. I wonder if I can get Final Fantasy VIII to launch faster. I might be able to get Final Fantasy VIII to launch faster. Yeah, Final Fantasy VIII is going to launch faster. So that's fine. All right, so let's go. Let's hit the settings for this. So this is settings. So I've got different things 
Ah. Oh, you're launch. It's launching into the game. Oh, Trari is launching. Okay, that's what's going on. So given that we're on a full window capture, we should have... Yep, there we go. Okay. So we'll use Terraria here. So we'll go into settings, and then we'll go to video. All right, so right up here, I can go windowed. So let's go windowed. Okay. So this is window mode in Terraria. And for anybody who's ever played Terraria, windowed mode for Terraria can actually be a better way to play the game. But that being said, let's go to our window capture here. We're gonna hit this. So now that we've got Terraria up, we're gonna hit Terraria, okay? And now it's a little bit off. So we we can right click and then what we can do is we can go to transform and then under transform, if I can stay on it, we're gonna go fit to screen, okay? Now Terraria is appropriately fit to the screen and at this point, if I wanted to do anything as far as like gameplay or recording or anything like that, I could absolutely do that. So, that's honestly pretty much it. There's really not much to the program. It's pretty simple. Now, there is one thing that I absolutely love about OBS that I wish Game Show did, and to my knowledge, it doesn't, and I have not found this option. And so it's under Tools, and what it is is it's Captions. This is one of the things that I like about OBS is OBS gives you a caption option. So if you hit this, you hit the enable button. Uh, as soon as you hit the source, because you've got to tell it, Mike. So we'll hit that, and then current system language, English, and then Microsoft Speech Text, which is fine. So at this point, once you hit that OK button, it's gonna, and then you hit record, it's going to pick up and it's going to create a caption file for you, which is actually a really good thing because if you're doing, if you're uploading, oh, Nobias is giving me issues again. That's fine. We'll go ahead and close out. And we'll close out. Uh, actually, I really just did that the long way. Um, so right now, this is on full screen. I could hit uncheck it and then it would not be in full screen. But all right, so we're gonna come here. We're gonna come to the camera. We're gonna go scale. And then we're gonna send that over. So we've got the, the full screen. So that's just kind of a brief tutorial. I know there are people who probably do a lot better tutorials, but because they're they like go a lot more further into it but this is a question that i've been asked a lot a lot of people have asked me how do you do what you do it's really not terribly difficult um the largest issue is youtube youtube right now is doing a lot of shit to hose their content creators which is why a lot of people are switching over to twitch um in order to even get monetized for YouTube, you've got to have 4,000 views and you have to maintain that for a year. So every year that you're doing YouTube, you have to maintain 4,000 views per year to stay monetized. On top of, you have to maintain 1,000 subscribers per year to maintain monetization. It's absolutely absurd. On top of the fact that there are also known issues as far as YouTube unsubscribing people, not giving people notifications, and I mean, there's there there are far more there are larger YouTubers who have talked about this particular issue with YouTube. So, if you want to do YouTube, I by all means go for it. I I was working very diligent, and very hard on YouTube, and then YouTube came out with their new requirements for what you have to do to get even monetized, and it's insane. And for as hard as I've worked on YouTube to try and build a base, I'm at 24, I'm, I'm at a little bit over 5,200 total views 
lifetime for the channel and I'm at 24 subscribers which is actually down to from where I was at I was at 26 and I ended up going from 26 to 19 and then rebuilding back up to 26 and I don't know if it's because YouTube unsubscribed people or people unsubscribed I don't know which one it is which is very problematic Twitch is a much better platform it's a stronger platform it allows direct content actually let me uh, a lot of people kind of are like how is Twitch or why is Twitch better? So let's actually kind of address that a little bit. Now oh, that's a little big. Let's go to 20. Eh, that's still a little off. I don't like that. Let's go in the middle. 25. That's still big. Okay, got it. All right, we'll go back to that. Although I could just crop things. Should make life a bit easier, but... Uh, all right. So. All right, so. It looks like... Yeah, you guys can't exactly see Twitch. Okay, I need to change what I'm capturing. Because right now I'm on monitor capture. Let's go... Window... This is not quite doing what I want it to do. That's a little, little frustrating. Okay. I'm going to pull my feed out of the stream. And then... Come over... And see if that actually does what I want it to do. It's interesting to watch it, because I'm also watching this, and it's like showing the same thing multiple, multiple times. So, all right, so this is kind of a showing of Twitch. It's not the greatest view that I would, I would, this is where actually a second monitor would actually be far more beneficial, because this is gonna like double and triple and whatnot over here on the left-hand side is gonna kind of repeat. Um, okay, that's just not gonna work. That's a little frustrating. Um, come to here, skilled effects. All right, we're just gonna come back over here. So anyways, the reason why I like Twitch. Um, Twitch allows me just honestly a lot more direct contact with you guys. If you guys are following me or part of my stuff on Twitch, you guys can send me a direct message and I'll respond to it because I can respond to it a couple different ways. Um, uh, there is a message option. If when you're on your when you're on your home screen, your home screen in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little message thing that you can click on and you can send a message to somebody, which is really cool. The other great thing about it is on your cell phone. Um, you can download the Twitch app 
and you can actually there there is a message function built into that so if you're on your phone like last night my wife and i were were at a karaoke contest the world karaoke contest to which she got through the first round and i was directly chatting with some people that i chat on discord with and yeah i could use discord and i could chat with them on discord as well but i was also directly chatting with them through Twitch because Twitch has that built-in chat function it's something that YouTube doesn't have or if it does have there's some really weird requirements but the last time I saw they actually were removing the the chat function out of their their stuff which I think is a bad idea I don't think that you should be doing that but it's not my call so um so anyway so Twitch the main reason why I like Twitch over YouTube is because of the direct contact I get with you guys. You guys can send me a message, and whether I'm sitting in front of my computer or not, I've got my phone, and I can respond to you. You can ask me a question, and I'll respond. That is something that is highly important. Being able to actually communicate with you guys, talk with you guys, no matter where I'm at, whether I'm in front of my computer or I've got my phone on me, is huge. So that's why I like Twitch. Anyways, I know that's a bit of a tirade and whatnot, so I apologize for that. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. It's very much appreciated. Um, again, I'm pretty positive there are people who have more comprehensive tutorials in regards to OBS and um, in game show. I'm. Uh, l l I mean, here's here's what it comes down to when it comes to to streaming things. Do you need a webcam in order to stream? No, not even remotely. You do not need a webcam. As long as you have a microphone and you are using OBS or Game Show or any other software, and there are several of them, by the way. There's These are just the ones that I have found that either offer you a free version or a, or a affordable paid option. Uh, Telestream, who does Wirecast, has a free version their paid version is like seven hundred dollars it does a lot though i mean for the price that you get there's a lot you can do with it you can multicast which allows you to stream to two or three or basically allows you to stream to multiple platforms at the same time which is fantastic it's actually something i really want to do to where i'm not just streaming on twitch i'm streaming on twitch and youtube and on facebook live I think that would be fantastic to be able to stream to three different sources all at the same time. That would be fantastic. Um, it allows a little bit better integration as far as DSLR cameras, because I've got a Canon T3i DSLR camera. And right now, if I want to use that camera, I have to use um, Sparkosoft. Sparkosoft is actually a really great program. Um, it has a free version, which is great, but it only allows you about 15 minutes or so of stuff if you use it directly. But Yes, so um, core that actually brings up another thing. So here's the thing. If you want to stream stuff from your PlayStation or your Xbox or a gaming console, you can absolutely do that, provided you have the equipment to do it. Because natively, your computer does not have the ability to do it. You have to get a capture, um, you have to get a capture device in order to do that so and game show and obs allows you to do that so as long as you've got that stuff you can do it so Cora, what you saying bud oh that's <laughs> The fact that they block it is crap. They shouldn't be doing that type of thing. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, so I mean, those are there. There's, in order to stream, you really don't need that much. 
you need a way to capture whatever you're playing. You don't necessarily need a microphone or a webcam. If you just want to stream without those things, you can absolutely do that. It's really up to you as far as how you decide to stream. It's however you want to build. In, in, in marketing, it's called branding. It's however you want to build your brand is, is what it is. So I, in a lot of ways, try and work very hard to evolve and change things and, and play with different formats. Like right now, I'm playing with keeping myself in the lower right-hand corner. Um, one of the reasons I actually did that was because when I do thumbnails for, for YouTube, I usually pull directly from the video itself, which means my webcam is in the picture. So I put it in the lower right hand corner because that's where the time mark is. So my webcam is hidden. So I do it intentionally. Um, for Twitch, it's really not that big of a, a big of a deal. I, I honestly have found that I actually like it in the lower right hand corner. It actually works really well there. So it's just, it's fantastic. Yeah. Elgato makes some really good stuff. Not cheap, though, so I can definitely understand um, doing something like the remote play. The remote play is not something that I have played with. Um, that might be something that I want to look into. Because I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't even, have, I don't have the first clue on how to even set a remote play up i'd have to look into that that would be interesting but i am also looking into actually getting an, an elgato card that would go into my computer so i can actually plug do a direct play as far as my equipment goes which honestly that's kind of more the way that i prefer to do things again this is me please understand what i'm telling you and suggesting is things that i like to do if you like doing things a different way do it your way that's the biggest thing that i could actually probably tell you in regards to to when you are recording and doing things is do it your way do not if you like a way that somebody does it and you want to mirror it actually the greatest form of flattery is to mirror somebody it really is if you really like the way that somebody is recording or doing something and you decide to mirror it that is probably the highest praise you could ever actually give somebody. Don't steal their content by any means. Don't don't be stupid. But if you like their format and you want to mirror that format, by all, that's a good thing to do. So, and, and Corvath, you're absolutely right about that. We all have our different ways of doing things. So do it your way. Do what makes you happy, and record and stream and play and have a blast the way that you want to do things so all right guys i've got about 20 minutes i've got a friend who's going to be picking me up and we're going to be uh doing some test playing for some magic and things like that so i'm going to be doing that for a little bit we'll have a den time up a bit later and then we might also have i, I might also do some house flipper i haven't played any house flipper in a while so I might also do some House Flipper tonight as well. We'll see. I'm not 100% on that one, but I do know that we'll at least still have the vlog. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new, don't forget that follow button up above along with the heart icon. If you like this video, if you think it could benefit somebody, share it. Let, let people know because that's the biggest way that people can learn is to be sharing the information. So share what you know. If you've got a passion for things, share it. That's probably the biggest thing I could tell you is, is share it. So. <laughs> well, I am. Uh, I'm not going to a store. I'm going to his house. So we're going to be test playing there. And um, yeah, card stores are trouble for me in a lot of ways so maybe that's something i'll cover in the vlog tonight is uh, how how troublesome um those types of stores are for me so anyways thank you guys so much like i said i've gotta i've gotta get going and things like that so have fun playing 
hopefully you guys learned something or or got some ideas on on how to stream and things like that so again thank you guys very much i'll see you guys on the flip side peace out